Yuka Kitamura, the renowned composer of so much of our favorite Soulsborne music, has resigned from her position at From Software. She tweeted on August 1st, 2023, Thank you for all your continued support. Today I have an announcement to make. I have decided to leave From Software, the company I work for, and to start working new as a freelance composer this August. She also followed it up with an additional tweet. I would like to continue to express myself in game music through various genres of music. I hope you will look forward to my music in the future. And she also posted a link to her new website with what I believe to be her accomplishments as well as a collection of song demos to show her talents. But how many of From Software's original soundtracks has she really been a part of? Let's take a look. Many of you may, or may not, be surprised to learn that some of everyone's favorite songs were not, in fact, composed, or completely composed, by Yuka herself. The famous and most iconic Dark Souls song, Gwyn's Theme, was actually not composed by her, but instead composed by Motoi Sakuraba. Motoi, another amazing composer who did predate Yuka at From Software, was involved in much of the music for Dark Souls 1, with iconic songs like Guinevere, Princess of Sunlight, and other memorable songs like Ornstein and Smo. After all, Yuka, who was born in April of 1990, only started with From Software in 2013 on their game Armored Core Verdict Day, before moving on to Dark Souls 2. And as you might imagine, Armored Core has a bit of a different style of music than any of the Souls games. A third-person shooter mecha game genre that now spans over two decades, Armored Core Verdict Day gave Yuka a chance to show FromSoft what she had to offer. But it was with Dark Souls 2 that she began to cement herself as the juggernaut that people know her as today. Yuka actually worked alongside Motoi Sakuraba for quite a bit of the Dark Souls 2 soundtrack. Dark Souls 2 may not be everyone's favorite Dark Souls game of the trilogy, or have that many memorable bosses, but there were some really good songs throughout the game. Some of these great songs composed by Yuka were found in not just the main game, but also some of the DLC as well, with songs such as Old Dragon Slayer and Aldia Scholar of the First Sin. and the incredible Sir Alon theme, which is as polished as the floor of his arena. Now that she got a taste of the Souls formula and the orchestral styles that accompany it, I mean, she is an exceptional violinist after all, it was time she started her work on FromSoft's next big game release. Bloodborne. Oh, yeah. Pale blood. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. Bloodborne was a Miyazaki masterpiece, and the soundtrack was the culmination of both Japanese and Western composers working together to bring this game to life. You had American composers like Ryan Amon, who composed The Hunter's Dream as well as The Moon Presence, not to mention the main theme of the entire game.
And we can't forget about the rush of Papa G's music as it really gets the blood pumping. You also have Michael Wanmacher, who composed the perfect soundtrack to Mikalash and his personality. But then you have Tsukasa Saito and Nobuyoshi Suzuki composing other iconic songs we all know and love, such as Ludwig, The Holy Blade, and Garmin, The First Hunter. So which ones did Yuka actually compose? Well, she brought us the sheer tension with Rom, Vacuous Spider. And expressing her love of violins and cellos with the incredible waltz with Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. The entirety of Bloodborne has simply incredible music, and it paved the way for Dark Souls 3 and Yuka Kitamura's breakout moment that springboarded her name to the front of everybody's minds. Riding off the hype that was Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3 was the highly anticipated second sequel and final installment to the beloved Dark Souls series. By this point, FromSoft was breaking out of their niche status as a developer and commanding more of the mainstream spotlight. Yuka Kitamura composed much of the entire soundtrack of the game with highly memorable music like the Firelink Shrine theme, Abyss Watchers and Twin Princes. The beautiful rendition of Soul of Cinder that ultimately leads into the iconic Gwyn theme composed by Motoy years earlier. But she did not stop there. She continued on with composing all of the DLC music, from Sister Fride to Grave Tender to Dark Eater Madeir and Slave Night Gale. It was after Dark Souls 3 that she changed tune and composed the music for FromSoft's next difficult installment, and that game was Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro was a very different game from the prior installments, so it commanded a different take for a great soundtrack. Sticking to traditional Japanese style of music, Yuka Kitamura composed nearly the entire soundtrack for the game with a few contributions by Noriyuki Asakura. She brought us the feeling of high tension with songs such as Genichiro Ashina and The Phantom Lady Butterfly. Let's not forget the high stakes, long fight 
of Sword Saint Ishin and the wild soundtrack on that epic battlefield. However, there was one more major game that Yuka Kitamura would take part in, at least that we know of. And it was FromSoft's greatest game yet, the game that would cement FromSoft as one of the greatest developers of all time. Elden Ring was one of the most anticipated games of all time, and winning that very award at the Game Awards. Yuka Kitamura joined once again with Tsukasa Saito and a couple other composers to create another exceptional soundtrack, one that would be as memorable as the game itself. From the peaceful music of Lindell to the beautiful composition of the regal ancestor spirit. We will never, ever forget a song we have all probably heard one too many times. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. As much as we will miss Yuka at FromSoft, do not forget that she is going freelance which means she just may show up in future FromSoft soundtracks anyway. And I'm sure she ended her career at FromSoftware the same way she began it, with Armored Core. But she'll now have the freedom to explore what she wants with her amazing talents. As far as FromSoftware themselves go, well, I'm sure they will be fine with the tremendous talent that they still have, such as Tsukasa Saito, who was responsible for some of the best Bloodborne music, as well as Elden Ring songs like Morgoth, The Omen King, and The Final Battle with Radagon. And you also have Shoi Miyazawa, who gave us Moog, Lord of Blood, and Star Scourge Rodan. So what do you think? Will we see Yuka again in future FromSoft games? Comment down below which of Yuka's songs are your favorite, as well as another composer you're looking forward to seeing more from. And if you like this short journey through Yuka's tenure at FromSoftware, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Souls-like content. I also stream Souls games on weekday nights, so feel free to drop by and say hello. Until next time.